a swimming dinosaur, meaning it would so it's similar to a hippo in that way. It goes and swims. It sort doesn't of, live yeah. under there. That's right. Yeah, and so you know, probably a, a a very strong tail. It has a very weird, long, thin, like crocodile type skull. Mm. It looks more like a crocodile than a dinosaur. And so I met with this crew the next day, and by the end of lunch. I was going to Egypt to look for dinosaurs. And this is where we get and into this, is this sitting starts. outside the yeah. office. Now, Peter is a great a friend of mine. I saw him like two weeks ago. Um, that's cool. It's a funny story. Now, we, we've been all, all over the world together, but that's how it started. Now, you were saying after 9-11, you couldn't go back over there, obviously, because of all the connections and all that. Yeah. But have you been able to go back there now and do some I, work? I could. I haven't been back there since because my research just went you know, elsewhere. What is the status of the lost dinosaurs or anything related to them as um, com as compared to like 2000 or 2001? Spinosaurus, the most famous of the lost dinosaurs, um, has since had new specimens discovered in Morocco. And so there are about six, I think, um, fragmentary specimens that have been discovered. They've been the subject of great debate. Um, they were reconstructed as a quadrupedal um, meat-eating dinosaur, and there aren't any other quadrupedal meat-eating dinosaurs, and this has been a huge controversy in paleontology. Mm. Um, part of it is that those that reconstruction is based on like six different individuals, and they have different proportions. So, you know, it's really hard to say. There weren't other quadrupedal meat-eating dinosaurs? All the meat-eaters are... are Bipedal. Bipedal. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because you would think about like, you know, I, I can only compare it to what we have now, but like lions and stuff yeah. like that, obviously Wolves. quadrupedal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So yeah. here it is, 168 million year old plant eating dinosaur fossil found yeah, in that Morocco. Be is, it. But if you look up Spinosaurus in Morocco, you'll you'll see it. Spinosaurus in Morocco. Let's pull yeah. that up mm -hmm. and see what we get. And so there's a there are new reconstructions of it now. Some of them show it bipedal, some of them show them quadrupedal, many of them show it to be a adapted for like coastal life, maybe a swimming kind of dinosaur. I do think that's true. Um, a swimming dinosaur, meaning it would, so it's similar to a hippo in that way. It goes and swims. It doesn't of, live yeah. under there. That's right. Yeah. And so, you know, probably a, a, a very strong tail. It has a very weird, long, thin, like crocodile type skull. Mm. It looks more like a crocodile than a dinosaur. Um, do yeah. we have a, do we have an estimate? I keep thinking of this today. Do we have an estimate on? I don't even care which period, whether it's Jurassic or Crustacean or, or whatever. But do we have an estimate on what the maximum population of dinosaurs was on the Earth at a given time? You mean number of species or numbers of individuals? Numbers of individuals. Oh, uh, it would have been. Imagine, um, you know, before people fanned out across the world, like mm -hmm. the 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 abundance of mammals on the land, the herds of, of, you know, a million bison and, you know, passenger pigeons that would block out the sun for a day. And it would have been like that, right? Probably even more. Wow. Um, so there would have been just, you know, you know, millions and millions, maybe, maybe billions of dinosaurs um, on the land at, at one time. Whew. Yeah. All right, Joe just got this up. Should I, should we scroll to the top, Joe, on this article? All right, so yeah, so that second picture. Fossils confirm enormous river monster roam Morocco. That is a, that looks like a dinosaur crocodile right there. Well, it has a very crocodile. It's it's called convergent evolution. So when two different species are adapting to similar situations, oftentimes they they begin to look like each other, right? They begin to have morphological similarities. Again, right. over hundreds of millions of years, though. Well, or, millions or, of or, years. I'm sorry, millions of years. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just think of um, the dorsal fin of a whale. That's, the, you know, the back fin of a whale and a, the dorsal fin of a fish. They don't get them from a common ancestor. Mm. They evolve them because they're they're solving similar problems right. in their environment, right? What do we know, like whales today that exist are such mm. amazing creatures. What, what do we chart them back to? Obviously, they're not dinosaurs, but... Whales are super cool. So whales are artiodactyls. They're in the same group with all the hooved animals, like deer, Interesting. Yeah. Um, so they first evolve. If you look at, um, if you can look up Pakacetus, like Pakistan, um, or Ambulocetus, um, try Pakacetus first. So um, there's a group of hooved animals 
that are carnivores. They're living on the south shore of Asia, you know, roughly 38, 35 million years ago. And they're becoming more and more aquatic in the way that maybe a, a sea otter is becoming more mm. and more aquatic. And you can imagine in a million years, maybe a sea otter is a fully aquatic animal, right? And we have this beautiful transitional uh, record of whales now becoming more aquatic. And then we start to see something um, like Basilocetus, which looks like a whale, but it still has some legs, mm. you know? And then we eventually see those get smaller and, and go away, and then whales. And so the first whales are, are the toothed whales, and we have toothed whales today in, in the group called Odontocetes, like the killer whale and the sperm whale. Mm. Um, and then later the baleen whales evolve, the, the big ones like the humpback whales and the blue whales that have the baleen for filtering out plankton. Um, but we, yeah, if you look there, see that third picture? I think that's probably uh, Pachycetus a there. A whale is related to that. That is a whale. <laughs> yeah, and so that's how they start. How big is that, the Pachycetus? That's like wolf size. And it gets to a whale. Yeah. That's like... Now, here's the thing that I love about geology and deep time is that it's all so contingent. So... You kill off that thing on the southern shores of Pakistan 38 million years ago, and today there are no whales. And the planet looks entirely different as a result. It affects the whole food chain. It would, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. That asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, like all asteroids, like all the planets, it formed when the solar system formed four and a half billion years ago. Go out to the asteroid belt four and a half billion years ago and hit that asteroid with a piece of popcorn. And then 66 million years ago, it doesn't hit the Earth, and the dinosaurs go, don't go extinct, and, and they lasted for 165 million years, and why not another 66 million years more? And we're not here. We never have. And we're not here. If you can Google something called uh, Pikeia, so P-I-K-A-I-A, -I, -A, I think. Got it. I'm really testing your skills here, Joe, aren't I? Joe is, yeah, there we go. Joe is Check out that first picture. The so, first one right there? Yeah. So Pikeia is from the Cambrian period. So it's about a half a billion years ago. Okay. Really old. So pre-dinosaurs. Way, way pre-dinosaurs, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And so this is a time when we get, it's called the Cambrian explosion. We get like the, the, the phyla that we have today, like we're in the phylum chordata, right? Mm -hmm. and so the phyla that we have today, they all appear in the Cambrian. And we get, life is mostly small and kind of slimy uh, then, and, but we get the first macro predator. It's this meter long thing called Anomalocaris, and it's got a hard body and it's free swimming in these big pincers and this terrible mouth. Um, so if you went back to the Cambrian and looked around, you'd see something like Anomalocaris and you'd say, bingo, that's, that's mm. gonna be the winner. That's gonna be the thing that you know shapes the future of the earth. But there's little Pikeia that exists at the same time. Pikea is about a centimeter and a half. It's tiny, it's soft, it doesn't look tough. You would never, ever put your money on Pikea. But it has some interesting features. It has bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry. This side looks like this side. Okay. It has its sensory organs concentrated anteriorly, right, at one end. Mm -hmm. um, it has a one-way digestive system, which I happen to think is the best kind of digestive system. Agreed. Right? Does that sound like anybody you know? Humans. Yep. It sounds like everything that has bones. Yeah. Sounds like vertebrate animals. And so if little Pikea doesn't make it out of the Cambrian period, there will never be fish, there will never be whales, there will never be dinosaurs or chickens or wombats or hoary bats or you or you or me if that thing fails in the Cambrian period. That's how contingent it all is. It's the butterfly effect of life. I mean, it is. At any one moment in time, there are an infinite number of futures. Yes. But we only get one. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.